you, tablet! Hmm? Whoops. Uh, guess we are linked. Good tidings, lonesome account manager on the cyber astral plane. Sorry I cracked up back there. Uh, past few days have been... You know what? Emotions are too raw to discuss. Please open a support ticket for me. Name's Thornton Bevins. Social ID Thorndog68. My main issue is... Am I dead? Something about this comfy waiting room has big afterlife in the metaverse vibes. And, well, last thing I remember, a blurry demon punched my ticket in front of my son. How's he doing? My son, not the demon beast. Huh, your waveform's popping, but I can't hear you. I hope you can hear me. If you can, give me a sign, something. Oh, a live chat pop up. Okay. Nope, it's frozen. Look, this whole thing went fugazi when I was trying to fill out your form. During the reason for your visit part, the tablet glitched out. That's why I hit the button to speak to a service rep. I assumed you would speak back. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if it helps to troubleshoot, I speak to you through the Tabula brand light gray computer slate provided for visitor sign-in. Looks like an oversized Nintendo Game Girl. Battery 16%. You still there? Nothing. Oop, something happened. Nice, I'm back on the form. Don't go. Your policy clearly states that you're not allowed to hang up on a customer. So, way I see it, either you help me escape this lousy excuse for limbo, or we embark on a never-ending phone call. Feel me? And by escape, I mean something other than going through door number one. I've skimmed your pamphlets. I'm not interested in spending eternity in a virtual resort full of my most hated enemies. I want to speak with my family, and I won't hang up until I'm satisfied. We've got all the time in the world your company has simulated for me here, strange as it may be. Now, let me just, I gotta use the voice of text because this touch screen, uh oh, looks like voice of text has been on the whole time won't turn off. <sighs> Three main possibilities. One, I'm talking to a staff member or pseudo-sentient entity, but I cannot hear you due to a bad connection. Two, you're a figment of my imagination, and I'm blathering to myself on the Guinness Book of Galactic Records' longest voice-to-text file. Three, some combo of the above. Leaning toward three. There's a processing sprite in the lower left corner. It looks like it's about to puke out a whole bunch of text, but it hasn't started. And there's no max character count. Best case, you clogged up your data pipe. Worst case, your sprite is, like me, afraid of throwing up. That means we're on a dangerous roller coaster, pal. Have you ever been nauseous heading into a loop-to-loop? -loop? I rest my case. I'd hate to hang up and be forced to leave a one-star review in the survey. Maybe you could do me one more solid, so I know I'm not alone here. Leak this recording to the press, that'd be peachy. Or you could transfer me. Emergency call button. That's new. English, press on. Blar Splarklon, Splark Donks. Okay, Buckaroo, there's no keypad. This conversation may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance and training purposes. Ha 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 ha! Gotcha! One moment. Before I go, we need to talk about the other place. Get it on the record. 
The patterns I've seen as I travel at night may be difficult to inscribe into your brain chip, but I'll try. It seems when I'm napping, I'm a ghost in the machines of Hellgate City. Anywhere the machines extend, I go. I tightrope walk across the most tenuous connections. Any wire wave, Bluetooth, red tooth, or Lynx line becomes mine. Yesterday, I followed one such signal to Miss Alfreda Jonesley's nearly defunct brain link. Alfreda was once a Neo Amsterdamian official, but that's all over now, she mused as she snatched another can to add to the ten-foot-tall plastic bag of recyclables she dragged along on a broken hoverboard. Down on level zero, she moved from shadow to shadow as the light from levels one and two burst through the occasional transparent street section, stairway, ramp, or elevator pad overhead. Zoop! She uncinched the bag's mouth and chucked the can into it. An empty can of Powawi Sweat sports drink plinked amongst the others. She had been strolling on level two, slurping up the dregs of just such a beverage with her cyber straw when it happened several years ago. It was a warm spring day. She had been recently reappointed in her role as building inspector. The headline blasted up on her hollow phone. City Inspector Jonesley ousted for failing to file 96 building code violations. Lurid details followed. A self-professed whistleblower accused her of sleeping with the head of the Landlords Association. It was slander, but what could she do? She swore she had logged the code violations. However, the Enforcement Division buried them due to an arrangement of kickbacks from various landlords that went to her superiors. And someone had thrown her under the digibus to distract investigators and redirect public opinion to an easy point of hatred. It blindsided her. Her husband left with their two children. Gag and the megacorps blackballed her. Unemployed and unable to pay rent on their micro-apartment, she was evicted. The works. Now she collected cans and lived in an undertunnel. I say all this because the person shadowing her, sneaking around and trying to get a good look past the scraggly hair poking out of her hood, was none other than Mills Bronworth, her former co-worker. Bronworth took over her old job, which was logical, but he had never said a word to her about it, and he was the last person she was expecting to track her down. He disguised himself as a mime. His Statue of Liberation costume, replete with metallic body paint, was so convincing she thought he was an augmented reality projection. A real mime would never work on level zero. Freda? He asked, haltingly. She whipped around, swinging her huge bag. It knocked him sideways, and he face-planted in a puddle. Well, who's asking? She asked the shadows. After no one replied, the worries clicked in. Was she hallucinating again? He moaned, snapping her out of it. Ugh, I think you cost me a tooth, he stammered, cupping his mouth. I didn't cause you drips, cyber bastard. Don't sneak up on people. Yeah, I, I owe you an apology. Listen, if you're one of those masochistos who gets off on this stuff... No, it's me, Bronworth. She squinted at him. So it was. She tossed him a packet of tissues. He used one to tamp the blood from his mouth and continued. I did it. A private hover ambulance approached. It barreled down from level two to level one, its siren blaring louder. You what? The ambulance burst through her bag, the force of which flung her into a brick wall and sent a thousand cans flying. A droid popped out of the back doors and placed Bronworth onto a hover gurney. The paramedic got out of the driver's seat to check on him, promising to get him patched up in a jiffy. Get her too. No can do. I'm fine, Alfreda mustered. She was not. Take her with us or I'll report you for reckless conduct. The droid forced Alfreda into the ambulance and manacled her to the jump seat. She fought to get out, indicating that she couldn't afford to lose the cans, but Bronworth promised to make it right. That was the whole purpose of his appearance. I'm the one who slandered you. Destroy your reputation. 
I cost you your job, and now look at you. I apologize for all I've done. I, I'm afraid if I don't get this off my... Is there any way you can forgive me? She wriggled in her bonds and lashed out at him. You cost me my family? Most of my friends? My home? Are you crazy? You want to make it right? Let me go and get the flock away from me. No, I, I want to atone. Whatever you need. Atonement? You can't get that. Not from me. It's all the people you lied to that need to hear this. You have to get right with them. Numerically, how can you? I could step down. Fall on your cyber sword? Please. It's over, Bron. You gotta live with it. Why are we stopping here? The ambulance pulled over, still hovering high above level two, where the care clinic entrance stood halfway up the block. The rear door opened and a blaggard hopped inside from his hover bike. The droid gestured to Alfreda. The stark reality of her situation sunk in as the cop approached her. She realized she was about to be taken into police custody as a result of this whole debacle. Some atonement. The rage, which she had never fully exercised, welled up inside her. Her heart pounded against her rib cage like a trapped wild animal. I feel exhausted just thinking about it. So we'll have to continue this tale next time. Well, that's all I can remember for now, Tabby. Perhaps I'll call you that. Or do you prefer Tabula? Oop. It seems I've opened a dictionary widget. Tabby says Tabula, noun. One of the transverse septa found in the colliculi of various corals and hydroids. That's a horrible definition, Tabby. You just defined a word using words that no one knows. This will haunt me. I was thinking of the ancient Roman variety of tabula, the smooth, erased surface of the tabula rasa, you know, pure consciousness, like a fresh baby or a newly unboxed computer. It's a phony concept, my own experience tinkering with human consciousness, swapping a new-ish mind into my derelict 24-year-old son's body, has been messy. My own son. If we were born blank, as Lawn Jock argued, we'd be even more tempted to clean each other's clocks. You're right, I should dial it back. I'll leave this running in the charging cradle and chillax into the May 1995 issue of Red Book featuring Whitney Houston. So, pardon my radio silence while I learn how to drive him wild in bed. Hello? Can you repeat that? Your name is Jer? 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 You there, Jer? Screaming Panda presents Tabula, episode 12 of Hellgate City. Written, performed, and produced by Kevin Barry, using stone tablets for record keeping. The Glitch in the Matrix bonus story that goes with this chapter is called Gum Witch and is available on the show's Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Hellgate City. Because we rock without ads or sponsors, our supporters keep this show going. Plus, supporters get weekly bonus stories, behind-the-scenes content, music, and eventually, exclusive merchandise. For transcripts, visit hellgatecity.com. Find us on social media at Hellgate City. Kevin composed our music. Until next time, Dreamwalkers. Do you also find the infinity room made of whiteboard material is not as clean as it used to be? Does a Doberman made of erasers chase you endlessly, biting at your dirty ankles? Welcome to the crew. <laughs>